Okay, I guess this is going to be a three-parter. So, um, right now we have a uh, scene with a cube that comes and hits this dragon, and right now he doesn't respond to that. We want him to, for example, uh, kill over dead when this big block hits him. So, uh, we're going to need to do a couple things. Uh, for one thing, this block, uh, you see we have a, a box collider already attached to it, and we've set it to trigger. We set the trigger on, is trigger. Okay, um, the other thing we're going to need is, uh, we're going to have to go into components, physics, rigid body. Okay. And this will give it some physics to react to something else. And uh, this is very important in this case. Uh, I want to turn off use gravity. Otherwise, the block is just going to fall down, and it's never going to hit this guy. Uh, obviously, you would want to use gravity if you were doing some sort of physics simulation. Okay, but when we play it, and the box just kind of goes through this guy. Okay, uh, so we need to add a script to our, our dragon character, our Draco Lich here. You see the Draco Lich just has a box collider with is trigger uh, checked. Okay, that's all we need for him. We could add also a um, rigid body uh, component as well, in which case, you know, if you wanted him to smash into other things, in this case, I just, I don't need that. So, um, I'm just going to leave it like this with a box collider with is trigger checked. Uh, let me open up the um, script that we have attached to this character and have it respond to when the cube hits him. So for, to do that, we'll use another Unity uh, function, built-in function called onTriggerEnter. And as you can see, onTriggerEnter, it comes with a, uh, a, it is given a variable, the other object that collides with it, okay? So you can use this object to determine what type of object collided with you. Okay, but in this case, we just want the character to uh, animate a, a different thing. So I'm going to have it die. It's going to play the die animation. You can see here, under my animations panel for that character, I have an animation for dying. And in order to do this, it's very simple. Just say animation.crossfade, and then the name of your animation clip uh, inside of quotes. And then, this is optional, but you'll probably want to do this. Animation.wrap mode equals wrap mode dot. And then you have a couple different options here. You can say loop. You could say once, if you wanted to play one time. Uh, in this case, when a character dies, for example, and he plays this animation, it's never going to play anything else. Uh, say, I use clamp forever. And that means that it will hold the last frame just ad infinitum. And so that way, the character won't get back up and play the animation again. All right, so when we play this scene, you can see that he, in fact, dies. And he does not come back. Okay? So, um, that is the basics of it. Of course, using just these two lines of code, animation.crossfade and animation.wrap mode, you can go ahead and have it respond to anything. Uh, for example, before I showed you that... Um, GUI, uh, you could do the, uh, you know, use the GUI functions to create a button that would have your uh, character animate, uh, you know, when you uh, click on or tap on a certain uh, uh, button or whatever. Uh, just combine the two techniques I've shown you so far, and that will get you through it. So those are the basics. Um, I've shown you a little bit of scripting. I've shown you a little bit of assigning variables to things. I've shown you a little bit of the physics and how to detect collisions and a little bit of how to uh, uh, animate things, uh, you know, based on what happens in the game world. So that's the kind of stuff that should get you started. I hope it helps out. Bye.